Is it possible that King Ghidorah is the reason that Geo was believed to be the last of the Iwi tribe, and that King Ghidorah killed the Iwi? The extinction of the Iwi tribe on Skull Island is one of the most important events still plaguing the MonsterVerse. Even all these years later, when we first met the Iwi, they fell firmly under Kong's protection, and were the only human faction native to Skull Island. They looked after Lieutenant Hank Marlowe for the greater part of three decades, and developed a prosperous civilization. When they were wiped out, though, the source was said to be a tropical storm that consumed Skull Island, and that Kong saved Gia while the rest of the civilization was wiped out. But stick with us today, Heralds of the Titans, because we'll be exploring how there is something else going on here that can all be traced back to none other than King Ghidorah. First, it's important to figure out exactly when the Iwi went extinct, and thanks to Gia herself and a few tie-in projects, we can get this narrowed down to a fairly small window of time. According to Kingdom Kong, the graphic prequel novel, the storm took place about two years after the rise and fall of Ghidorah, and this plunged Skull Island into a domain of eternal darkness. In Kingdom Kong, however, we learned that this storm was not the only danger to the Iwi people though it wiped out a considerable amount of them. When King Ghidorah rose from the ice and supposedly defeated Godzilla, he ascended to the rank of an Alpha, and subsequently unleashed the call of an Alpha, which was heard around the world. This call stirred long dormant titans from their eons of slumber, and Skull Island was no exception to this. First, the Skull Crawlers became much, much more aggressive, and this severely pissed King Kong off. He had to go into overdrive in order to maintain order on Skull Island, but we have another video diving into specifically how Kong himself was affected by the Alpha Call of Ghidorah, so we recommend that you check that out if you're interested, and we will link it below. The Iwi tribe, however, were unfortunate casualties that had been caught in the crossfire of this major conflict and as a result, Kong had a much more difficult time protecting his human companions. This isn't what caused the Iwi to go extinct though, as that would come later, but it did thin their numbers a great deal, destroy a number of their homes and structures, and damage their defensive capabilities. Deep within the bellows of the Hollow Earth though, stirred the titan known as Kamazots. While Kong was not affected by the call of the Alpha, or at least was not obligated to obey the commands of a new king, Kamazots was, and he made landfall in San Diego during Ghidorah's reign. Kamazots is a hyper-aggressive, highly destructive, bat-like titan with jagged horns and shredded wings, and immediately Immediately following his landing in San Diego, we learned that he meant business. Labeled by Monarch as a destroyer titan, he falls into the same category of the malevolent titans such as Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, Rodan, and Muto Prime, all of whom are destructive and amoral titans who cannot be tamed. When Godzilla did eventually regain control over the Titan hierarchy though, Kamazots was driven back into hiding, eventually making his way through the Hollow Earth tunnels and landing in the catacombs beneath Skull Island. After two years of hibernation, the climate of Skull Island began to shift and change dramatically. It began to experience earthquakes much more regularly, and the weather was becoming more and more unpredictable until the aforementioned storm took shape. In the Kingdom Kong novel, we follow an explorer by the name of Houston Brooks, who uncovered an ancient inscription detailing a so-called King of the Deep. Before we could understand what this meant, the Monarch team inadvertently freed Kamazots, who had been causing the violent earthquakes in attempts to break free. The prophecy told of a monster of darkness who would return once the light was bled from Skull Island, and this storm provided just the darkness that Kamazots was looking for. Now we get two factors that contributed to the decline of not just the Iwi people, but also the entirety of Skull Island. First we'll be talking a bit more about the titan Kamazots, but next we'll be talking about the peculiar nature of the storm itself, and how this storm was unlike anything that had been seen before anywhere else on the planet, not just Skull Island. These two problems, however, arrived at once, and Kong had to battle Kamazots in the midst of this hurricane, which made his job much more difficult in protecting the Iwi. Their collateral damage did claim the lives of several Iwi villagers, but even when Kamazots wasn't directly responsible for killing the Iwi, his conflict with Kong meant that Kong could not protect them. He was simply too preoccupied to protect the remaining Iwi, and the storm only grew worse. As we mentioned before, this isn't a regular storm, and was actually manifested by Ghidorah, who we know is able to generate weather anomalies as one of his key abilities. Until 1973, Skull Island was under the guise of a perpetual storm system that never seemed to cease, and the only area 
of refuge was in the eye of the storm where Skull Island lie. The storm was similar in nature, only instead of there being a safe haven at the center, this torrent was perpetually chipping away at Skull Island, systematically stripping away anything caught in its path. We can see this in the modern day as well, as there is a specific monarch compound designed to preserve at least some of the natural ecosystem that remained, and this is the containment facility that we see at the beginning of Godzilla vs Kong. Kingdom Kong goes even further as we confirm that the weather anomalies caused by Ghidorah were responsible for the formation of this everlasting hurricane, and unfortunately, the extinction of the Iwi people. Kong, however, managed to save just one member of the humans who came to rely on him a young girl by the name of Gia, who would eventually become one of the most important humans in the world of Mighty Titans. What this means though, is that Ghidorah is responsible for three different variables that all culminated in Gia becoming the last of her kind until the new empire. First, his call stirred the Skull Crawlers, who were the first wave of attack that thinned the number of human survivors on Skull Island. Second, he awakened Kamazots, who not only inadvertently caused the death of several Iwi in his battles with Kong, but also made sure that Kong was unable to save as many as he could. And finally, Ghidorah continues to alter the atmosphere even all of these years after his short reign. The weather anomalies that he caused stirred a storm so violent and everlasting that it consumed the entirety of Skull Island. And had it not been for Monarch, the storm may have seen the end of Kong given enough time. The powers of King Ghidorah have altered the planet completely and everlastingly, eliminating all of the Iwi people on Skull Island, presumably years after Ghidorah's death. Ghidorah stands as one of the most devastating titans in all of the MonsterVerse lore, and is still taking out individuals due to the very changes that he made to the planet. He is an invasive, deadly king, and has killed many titans and many humans. But anyway my friends, and heralds of the titans, what are your thoughts on Ghidorah being the reason for the Iwi's destruction, and the Devil King being responsible for so much death in the MonsterVerse, and on Skull Island specifically? What are the effects of an invasive alpha species that is not meant to reign on planet Earth coming here? And we can only imagine how bad things would be if Ghidorah, years after his death, is still causing the near extinction of people. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, it would help us out a great deal if you could leave a like. And if you'd like to see more MonsterVerse and superhero content, consider subscribing. As always, though, thank you so much for visiting the channel, and I hope you're having a phenomenal day.